but first I'll explain like I'll just explain what the graph is and then I'll explain how you choose house or how you choose like what to do with your espresso what you're trying to accomplish with your espresso and how this graph helps you understand where it is oh is it on mm -hmm. oh uh it's time. Um, so, this graph is about espresso development, and it's a common misconception in coffee, as well as in espresso, that you can actually only have a single range of numbers that will provide the best and perfect cup of coffee. That's simply not true. It's a myth, and that's something that we should always try and debunk. What we see here is, in fact, you can have coffee that can pull at a range of parameters and still find itself in a nice sweet spot. It's largely dependent upon what you're trying to accomplish with your coffee. Any baristas I train or anyone that I talk to, I always ask the question, not what numbers do you need to hit, but what are you trying to accomplish with your coffee? If you're trying to make sure that your espresso shines through in milk, because you're a milk-based cafe, and that's okay, and that's what you primarily use your coffee for, then you're really going to want to seek out, you see here, a stronger shot without an extended yield, but still hitting that sweet point where it's not bitter, it's not sour, it's not strained or astringent, and you can still taste it in a nice way within the milk or through the syrups. If your cafe is more specialty and you're prioritizing the coffee and not the milk or the syrups, a huge factor that goes in to dialing in is balance. Within the SCAA as well as within the SCAE, balance is a huge factor to where you want to be able to drink the espresso to where it's actually very accommodating, it's very nice, it's not just like a syrup and thick, but you want to have a greater yield, extended extraction, and less strength and less concentrate, but still maintain that sweet spot that the espresso gives to you. There is downfalls on both ends. With that, it doesn't mean that this sweet spot gets bigger and bigger as you pull it, gets bigger and bigger as you get a greater yield. It maintains the same sweet spot. So with that, you still have the downfalls of what could be under or over extraction. And with that, we'll have to go ahead and understand grind, surface area, and taste, which will be a huge factor. And taste, that factor will actually be the variable of time, which will help you determine how it actually should be ground and pulled. That's all. Whenever you're ready. Did you sign? Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, so, the way that I go ahead and dial in is very much influenced by Matt Perger. And Matt Perger developed something called the Espresso Hierarchy. And the Espresso Hierarchy is very akin to my heart for the sole purpose that it prioritizes waste management. And waste management is very key to be concerned about. And that's a large portion of the technology that we find with grinders, as well as machines and techniques. It prioritizes not just wasting coffee when dialing in, such as five, six, seven, eight shots where you just dump them and dump them and dump them to try and find what that is. So what this does is it actually locks in variables and then once it locks in those variables, it can help you find what's the best time frame to find the good flavor of the coffee. So with that in the espresso hierarchy, it does go in priority with dose, being fixed first, yield being sick, fixed second, and time being the last fixing. And what that does is it locks in what your parameters are and how you dial in. So the dose, there are two constraints that actually determine your dose. Very first, very easily, how big is your basket? Is your basket a 20 gram basket? Is it a 15 gram basket? Is it a 17 or 18 gram basket? That will immediately tell you how much coffee can you put in here? You can't put 
15 grams in an 18 gram basket because you're going to have too much head space. That will create a lot of spooling. It won't be good. You can't put 28 grams in a 20 gram basket because it just simply won't fit. So the first constraint is how big is your basket. The second constraint, which is a little bit more contoured, is how much space does the coffee give to you after you grind it out? You can fit 18 grams in a basket, that's an 18 gram basket, from one coffee, but with that same 18 gram basket, you can fit 20 grams in that 18 gram basket. It's largely dependent upon how the coffee grinds itself out. So, with that, easiest way to fix the dose, 18 gram basket, go ahead and start with 18 grams. With that 18 grams, you can now move to how you want to extract your coffee. Extracting that coffee largely utilizes this graph, but the first thing you can do is ask the question, what are you trying to accomplish with your coffee? With that, you can know what your yield should be. What I always do with any coffee I get, outside of talking to the roaster or the company that I get it to, which should always be your go-to, is I do a one to two ratio. So. I go ahead and lock it in at 36 grams. 18 grams in, 36 gram yield. From here, what I'm seeking for now is time. After these two parameters are fixed, I go to time. Time is the last measure and the only measure that you will start to use your own palate as well as how it tastes to you. With time, normally you're going to be looking for anything in between 25 seconds and at the very most, even though sometimes I've seen a couple get it beyond this, but 40. This is the frame you're looking for. What you're going to do is, seeking these two fixed variables, you're going to start pulling shots. You're looking for anywhere in between this time frame and then tasting it how it, and see how it feels. Is it sour? Is it bitter? Is it sweet? Is it good? Is it complex? You're looking for various things that would map inside here on this sweet, sweet spot that would determine for you this is where the coffee should be dialed in. Once you go ahead and figure out what that time is, you then lock that in. Let's say it's 28 seconds. And then what you get here is your recipe. And this then will be 18 grams in at a 36 gram yield at 28 seconds. And that's what you use. I'm recording right now so you can see how you look like when you're moving and stuff. I would try to talk a little bit louder though. Okay. Like talk to me with us. Is this look okay? Yeah, come look at it. So if you were to go any further with your hand, I couldn't see it. The right Down hand. or up? Up. Okay. Good? Mm -hmm. So what this graph does is I am essentially designing uh, a way that baristas can come to espresso dial in espresso and realize that there is a lot to accomplish with the espresso and with that what look in here don't look at me look there okay every sentence okay. <laughs> is it good mm -hmm. so this graph is about espresso development this is what you can bring this is what Boris is bring to dialing in uh, in another segment we'll talk about dose time and yield which affects this and what this does for you is it helps you understand that in fact the coffee that you're dialing in for your espresso does have a range of goodness about it. It's a matter of what you're trying to accomplish with your espresso and that is going to be hugely factored and determined by what type of shop you have. Is your shop producing mainly syrup based drinks, uh, milk based drinks? Frappes or sort of blended base strings. What are you using your espresso for primarily? So if you do have a large milk base drink shop 
and that's what your primary customer gets, you're going to be wanting to go ahead and find in this graph your espresso landing in the more stronger area. That stronger area is going to produce a less yield, not as much of a yield. It's going to be a more concentrated shot, so that can go ahead and actually um, shine through in the milk or the syrups, so that just doesn't really get canceled out. So with that, uh, as we talked about in dose and the yield, your dose is going to remain the same. Your yield is actually going to be less than if you're looking for a balanced shot or a greater yielded shot. And so you're going to still be looking for this nice sweet spot down here. However, a common misconception that actually happens is just because this graph goes up and the extraction goes up doesn't actually mean that the time goes up as well. You can have a 35 second pull right inside here as opposed to a 28 second pull with a greater yield. All of that is going to be determined about uh, by the surface area of the actual coffee that you grind. And the amount, I don't want this. <laughs>